Welcome to the world of Windcraft. Are you new to the server or just want to learn more about the game? Well, then this is the video for you. Timestamps and chapters are down below, so let's get started. Also make sure to stay to the end of the video for a special coupon code to the Windcraft store. Before you start playing, there are a few useful things to know about. First off, let's take a look into the server rules. They can be found on the forums and linked down below. This way you know what is allowed and what isn't, so we can keep Windcraft being one of Minecraft's best communities. Secondly, there's logging on to the server. Make sure to enable resource packs and then there are two different IPs you can use. Use lobby.windcraft.com to join into the lobby or play.windcraft.com to log directly into the game. Once you logged into the game and selected a world, you now need to create a class. There are several slots so you can try out multiple classes. You can pick between 5 classes and ranked players also get additional reskinned versions which basically just have visually upgraded spells. The 5 classes are Archer, Warrior, Mage, Assassin and Shaman. Archer is a ranged class utilizing distance and high damage. Warrior is a tanky class with good defense. Mage is a spell based class with team support capabilities. Assassin is a close range class dealing damage whilst being close to its enemies. And lastly Shaman, a crowd control class with high area damage, but it does have a bit of a learning curve. For your first playthrough, I would say try whatever class sounds interesting. They're all fun to play, but they do have different playstyles. When you've created a class, you are sent into the tutorial, a small intro quest before you enter the game world. But before you get started, let's take a look into your hotbar. There you can see three things, the character info, the quest book and your soul points. The character info contains a lot of things, such as your combined weapon and armor stats over in the info section, mastery tomes, something you'll unlock in a later quest in the game, profession info, such as your progression throughout profession leveling, your combat info, such as your defenses and your damages, the crates and cosmetics menu, the guild menu, the recruit a friend button, where you can get rewarded for getting a new player to join, but most importantly, we have the ability tree and the skill points, but those we'll talk about more later. Then there's the quest book, which shows quests you have unlocked, quests you haven't unlocked yet, and quests you've completed. And if you hover over a quest, you can see all the information you need, and if you right click, you get a little tracker on the side and a beacon that will show you where to go. The quest book also contains stuff as your quest progression, your discoveries, and secret discoveries, and also mini quests and as you can see it has progression bars for all of them on the side as well. Lastly we have the soul points. Basically the less you have the more items you risk to lose when you die. You can hover over them to see uh, more specifically about what items you risk losing but you're only really at risk once you're at six or less soul points. There's max 15 soul points and you will get a new one every 15 levels until level 75. Once you die you lose 2 soul points and when you use a teleportation scroll you lose 1 soul point. You can gain more soul points and get them back every sunrise. Usually you get 1 but some items can increase it to 2. Then there's also the ingredient pouch. This one basically just stores the drops from mobs. I know you're eager to start, but before you start the tutorial, look at the different indicators over your hotbar. There's a combat level meter that shows your level progression. There's currently 105 main levels and one extra one at the end. Next up, there's the health, mana and sprint bars. The health bar displays your health, the mana one how much mana you have, spells deplete mana, and lastly your sprint bar, which indicates how much you can sprint until you need a small break. 
and when you're not sprinting, the bar turns into coordinate meter. Now you're ready for the tutorial. I'll see you on the other side. Once you've completed the tutorial, you'll be here, the starter city of Ragni. So let's unpack the rest of all the information you need to know. Before we get started with the gameplay and such, let's start with spells and abilities. All classes have so-called ability points, as demonstrated in the tutorial. Those points you can spend on different abilities and upgrades in the ability tree menu. There's a total of 45 ability points and you unlock them as you level up, so you can pick and choose which abilities you want for your class. But basically, the ability tree contains 4 base spells for each class and then there's several other types of abilities and upgrades. They cost between 1 or 2 ability points and some of them have different requirements. Put simply, there's overall abilities that affect spell cost or it's an overall ability, then there's upgrades tied to a spell or to an archetype. Speaking of, each class has 3 archetypes, and put simply, they represent a different playstyle and their tied in abilities and upgrades reflect that. But you can of course combine different abilities from different archetypes. We earlier discussed the classes, but let's briefly also describe each of their archetypes. Archer has the Bolt Slinger, Sharpshooter and Trapper archetypes. Bolt Slinger relies on being up close and dealing lots of damage, whilst risking being hurt. Sharpshooter, on the other hand, sits at a safe distance and snipes at its enemies. And lastly, Trapper utilizes placeable traps to encase its enemies in a deadly web with help from a friendly beast. Warrior has the Fallen, Battle Monk, and Paladin archetypes. Fallen uses a corruption system where you boost your damage whilst risking your safety. Battle Monk, on the other hand, utilizes movement spells and spells to deal close up damage to its enemies. And finally, Paladin. It's tanky, taking hits while supporting its teammates. Mage comes with the Riftwalker, Lightbender, and Arcanist archetypes. Riftwalker stacks damage against enemies over time and can stop itself in time to overload its attacks. Lightbender is a support archetype that gets stronger the more it supports its allies. And lastly, Arcanist stores up attacks the more damage it does and can release powerful bursts of spells. Assassin has the Shade Stepper, Trickster, and Acrobat archetypes. Shade Stepper hides in the shadows from its enemies to deal deadly sneak attacks. Trickster uses clones to crowd control its enemies. And lastly, Acrobat uses movement and spells to dodge around its enemies whilst dealing damage. Finally, Shaman comes with the Summoner, Ritualist, and Acolyte archetypes. Summoner uses summons and several totems to deal lots of damage. Ritualist can switch between different masks for different boosts in power. And lastly, Acolyte risks its own health to boost both its damage and to support its allies. If you want to reset your ability tree, you need to complete the level 25 quest to recover the past. A reset costs 3 ability shards. You get 6 at quest completion. To get more, complete your daily or guild objectives. You can also trade them, and you can get them from your daily reward. Upon reset, you can freely change things around, as long as you're in a city or on your housing island. Once you leave a city, all your changes will be locked in. Next up on the roster, we have merchants. Around villages, cities, and even out in the wild, you can come across different kinds of merchants. Their purpose is to basically sell you stuff or services. So let's go through some important types of merchants. First off, we have the bank, where you can store your items. They are located in basically all cities, and for some extra emeralds, you can purchase more space. Next, there are potion merchants, who sell healing potions, mana potions, and elemental potions, which give you temporary elemental boosts. 
Then we have armor and weapon merchants, in case you need some gear when the mob loot hasn't yielded good items. The blacksmith on the other hand will buy items from you for a small amount of emeralds, or for some repair scrap. He will also help you repair your crafted gear. Probably the most important merchant is the item identifier, that will identify your unidied items. There's the tool merchant that sells beginner tools for low level professions, more on those later though. The scroll merchants exist in all cities and even in smaller towns. They sell teleportation scrolls which you can use to travel back to that city, but they deplete one soul point. Then we have the dungeon merchants who sell unique items for each dungeon which you purchase using the unique dungeon tokens you get at completion. There's also the Powder Master, who can help you add or remove elemental powders to your items. We'll discuss those later on. Lastly, there is the Trade Market, which only exists in larger cities and it's basically where players can buy and sell all kinds of items from other players. Quite useful when you're in need of something specific. When you venture into the wild, there are a few items it's smart to keep on you. Some obvious ones are weapons and potions of course, but keeping a small amount of emeralds on you can come in handy, maybe even in an emerald pouch if you can find one. And a teleportation scroll would also be smart if you quickly need to get back to a town. Now, Windcraft has both large and small cities and villages, and they're marked by the You're Now Entering title on the screen. It's quite useful to know that these serve as a respawn point if you die. When you do, you'll spawn in the nearest city you visited. It's now time to get into the gameplay and what to do in the game. The main objective is to level up and to explore the world, but there's lots of other things to do as well, so let's have a look. There are several ways to level up your character's combat level. There are also profession levels, but we'll go through those later. Combat levels is what unlocks gears, weapons and quests. So how can you level up? The main way to level up is by doing quests. You unlock them as you level up and you can find them in your quest book. They reward you with XP, emeralds and sometimes unique items. Quests are quite useful as they can contribute around 60% of all the XP you'll need to level up throughout your entire playthrough. And down below you can find guides to all the quests in the game. Another way of leveling up is to kill mobs that spawn around the world. Usually mobs within plus minus 10 levels of your class yield good XP. Not only do they award you XP, but it's one of the best ways to get new gear and new items as well. There are many leveling spots scattered around the world and down below you can find guides for where you can go to level up between quests. In your quest book, you'll not only find quests, but also mini quests. There are two types. Slaying mini quests where you bring mob drops for some extra XP as a reward or gathering quests where you gather profession materials for some profession XP. Then there are dungeons. These are tougher challenges, so bring a friend and a couple of potions. You do need a key to enter, which you'll get from a key guardian that spawns around areas with a similar level to the dungeon. Many dungeons also require a quest to unlock them. To complete a dungeon, you go through different rooms to at the end fight a boss. The reward is lots of XP and tokens which you can use in the dungeon shop. There are also a few raids, which are much more difficult than dungeons and they require a certain amount of players to enter and similar to dungeons, there are tough bosses at the end. The reward for completing them is both XP and a chest that can give various types of both unique loot but also emeralds, profession materials, horses and other items. Lastly we have discoveries. Discoveries come in different types. There are world and area discoveries which give you XP whenever you discover a new place on the map. But then there's also secret discoveries more tied in with the lore and hidden around the world. 
they give a larger amount of XP when you find them, and of course, there are guides linked down below for where to find them. Parkour is a widely used game feature on the server. It's used in many quests, dungeons, raids, and even when you're just out and about. Now, parkour can of course be tricky, but trust me, after a few tries, you're sure to make it. But if you do need practice, there's a practice course in the starter city of Ragni. Every day, the player gets a daily objective, which upon completion will reward you with a good amount of loot. Players in guilds get a weekly objective with even better rewards. The actual mission varies between gathering professional materials, killing mobs, completing dungeons or raids, or looting a set amount of chests. Speaking of looting chests, it's one of the methods of obtaining loot and new gear. We've already discussed that killing monsters is one way, but there's also things such as loot chests all over the map. These chests are marked with particles, and when you open them, depending on their tier, they will have a certain amount of loot. And on the topic of loot, let's also briefly mention the different tiers of loot there is. When it comes to gear, there's normal tier, unique, rare, legendary, fabled, and then the highest tier, mythic. There's also set items that give you special boosts if you use the entire set. I previously mentioned professions, and to explain them, it's another aspect of Windcraft that is generally more optional. What you do is that you gather materials around the world and then together with drops from mobs you can craft useful items. There are 12 professions in total, 4 gathering related and 8 crafting related. Professions can however be very grindy and repetitive, so I recommend either starting with them later on in your first playthrough or even on your second character. But if you are interested, there are several guides linked down below. Earlier we mentioned skill points and elements, so let's take a look. Skill points are points that affect your character in different ways, and gear can require, add, or even remove set amount of skill points. And every time you level up you gain 2 points that you can put into skills. But skill points are also connected to elements, and basically they have to do with your playstyle. With elements, gear can have elemental defense or damage, and mobs around the world can have defenses, damages, or weaknesses to certain elements. So let's go through what they do and how they work. There's 5 elements and 5 skill point types, and as mentioned, they're connected. The strength skill increases all damage dealt, and the earth element mainly focuses on stronger attacks. The dexterity skill increases the chance of doing a critical hit, which will double your damage and the thunder element focuses on faster and more critical attacks. The intelligence skill lowers the mana cost of spells and increases the amount of mana you can have, and the water element focuses on stronger spells. The defense skill decreases the amount of damage received and the fire element mainly has to do with being more tanky. Lastly, the agility skill increases the chance of dodging 90% of damage from an attack and the air element focuses on dodging and faster movement. But you don't have to focus on one singular element, but you can combine several or even all of them to balance out different pros and cons to create strong combinations. There's also elemental powders that you can add to items that have powder slots. Powders add different kinds of damage or defense buffs to weapons and armor, and using two tier 4 or higher powders will also add a special powder ability. One of the core goals of the game is to of course explore the map and see new places. But the map can be quite big, so there are a few ways to ease your way of travel. At level 13 you unlock the quest A Stable Story. Upon completion it will reward you with a horse, which can be very useful. They can also be upgraded by horse breeding, but that can be quite expensive, so I suggest upgrading by buying better ones on the market. 
Another way to improve your travel is by utilizing the movement spell every class has. The world also has several ways of fast travel scattered throughout the map and down below I've linked a guide to all of them. Lastly, there's also gear and some abilities that can improve your travel by increasing your walk speed or decreasing the mana cost for your movement spell. A part of the game that isn't necessarily connected to game progression, but more so to connect to the community, are guilds. Guilds are basically groups of players either just to chill with friends and get to know new players or to partake in guild wars, which is basically fighting different guild towers to take control of sections of the map for different guild related rewards. We'll talk more about how to find a guild later on. During your visit in towns you might have come across a hot air balloon and wonder what that is. That is the housing balloon, and for 4 emerald blocks you can purchase a housing plot where you can build your own house and store your items and much more by purchasing blocks and NPCs using profession materials and emeralds. Check the guide linked down below for more information. We've now gone through the main gameplay. However, during your adventures there are quite a few commands that could be quite handy to know. Slash help will list all available commands. Slash msg and slash r can be used to message and reply to a player. Slash trade can be used to trade another player. Slash duel on the other hand can be used to duel another player. Slash item lock can be used to prevent you from accidentally dropping an item. Slash class can be used to return to the class selection menu and it's also a good place to afk. Slash hub but also lobby and server can be used to return to the lobby to switch worlds. Slash friend add or remove can be used to add and remove players to your friend list. Slash report can be used to report a player in case you see anyone breaking the rules. Use slash kill if you get stuck or anything else to respawn in the last city you visited. Use slash party create, invite, kick and promote to create a party with other players to get shared XP bonus. You can also use slash party finder to look for public parties for grinding, raids or similar. Use slash toggle to toggle different settings on and off such as player ghosts. Use slash fix quests to get any quest items if you've lost them or to fix broken dialogue. Slash switch can be used by ranked players with hero or higher. This command allows them to switch to a specific world without first joining the lobby. On store.wincraft.com you can find several things to both help you and the server. Ranks for example give you different bonuses like mob totems. These increase mob spawn rates. You can also get more slots for classes. But there's a whole list of perks. There's also pets, crates and bombs. Pets can for example help you in battle, but there is a free pet anyone can claim. Bombs add for example double XP for the entire world for 20 minutes, or they can let you shout a message to the whole server. There's also uh, different kinds of bombs. Lastly, we have crates, which basically give you in-game cosmetics, but every month everyone can claim one free crate. If you want to get anything from the store, make sure to use the coupon code OLLI10OFF for 10% off of everything on the store. This video is not sponsored or anything, it's just something Salted and I wanted to do for you guys. Windcraft does have several web features that can be quite handy to know. On the main website there's for example a stats page and a help page that does contain useful information. On the forums there are several sections. In the Windcraft section you can find everyday discussions, giveaways and community events marked with a green tag and guides marked with a blue tag. On the question section you can get any win related question answered. And on the planning parlor section you can find other players to help with quests or dungeons or just to play with. 
There's also a guild section where you can find guilds who are looking for members to join. There's also a discord with similar sections to the forums, such as Wincraft for everyday discussions, questions for questions, looking for group to find players to join you, and guild recruitment to find joinable guilds. There's also the official Wincraft map, where you can look at the map and follow your character live. Last of the official features, there is the Windcraft Wiki that contains loads of articles on everything Windcraft. Apart from official sites, there are other websites you can use as well. There is Windata, which has the entire item list and other useful features. There's Windbuilder, where you can create builds with different types of gear to calculate your damages and spell costs. There's also Uwin where you can find world timers and some guides for gameplay elements. There's also lots of community discords, but I would say the top ones are the Bomb Tracker Discord to find what worlds have XP and other bombs active. There's the Profession Tryhard group for anything prof related like finding a player to craft items for you. And lastly, Blue's Builds, the largest collection of builds for all kinds of playstyles and classes. All of these websites and discords are linked down below. Then we of course have YouTube and Twitch, with several different content creators. Just on this channel we have a collection of guides on basically everything. There's leveling guides, quest guides, profession guides and much more. Finally, I will quickly discuss community modding. As advertised, you of course don't need any mods whatsoever for Windcraft. The community does however have a few quality of life mods that they tend to use. However, my advice would be that you first try playing the game without mods before you get into modding. But with that said, let me discuss a few of the main mods. First. We have Windtills that basically adds a ton of quality of life add-ons such as an in-game minimap with trackers and many more things you can read about on their website. Then we have Voices of Win, a mod that adds voice acting to all quests so you don't have to read or try making different voices and accents in your head for every NPC. And lastly I'll mention my own mod pack. Windcraft Immersive Overhaul to allow higher render distance and other visual improvements so you can enjoy the visual beauty of the game without having to sacrifice too much performance. There are of course other mods that surely many will mention down below in the comments, but if it wasn't mentioned here, I would advise you to first check with one of Windcraft's moderators to see if that particular mod is allowed or not. And that was it guys, there's of course many more things you'll learn as you play the game, but this is everything you need to know as a new player to Windcraft. Hopefully you've learned something new and you've enjoyed watching the video. There's a little surprise here at the end for you guys, but let me just say thank you for watching, please leave a like and a comment down below and subscribe if you want to, but as always, goodbye!